bigger picture. Let's let's go into education. Let's talk people arthritis from a physio point of view. Yeah. Tell them how you see the disease developing and the consequences globally on the body and therefore how your brain might look at that case when it arrives. And your case that we will talk about is a 11 year old spaniel that's had two unattended to cruciates. Okay. Bulky, not moving, grossly distended. Um, and it's also got shoulder tendinopathies because of weight shifting. So that's your dog. It's going to turn up. How does your brain work like a physio so people can get a better understanding of the disease and how big it is? So so in, in that sort of instance, I try and... Um, so when we talk about arthritis, um, I, I try and sort of lay a foundation of, of what arthritis is, and why it is caused, and then why in particular with a dog that's ruptured its cruciate ligaments might be getting wear and tear in its knees and causing this sort of this painful pattern around its stifles in the first instance. Um, so I'm, I'm always quite struck um, by the sort of owners and indeed professional dog handlers, how little they know about their own dog in terms of its structure and function. So the number of people that uh, perhaps don't understand that their dog has cruciate ligaments, like we have cruciate ligaments, um, and sort of, sort of relate that back to ourselves that, you know, if we were to rupture a cruciate ligament, just how much discomfort and problems that might cause long term. Um, and then if you go along long term without treating an unstable joint, that this pattern of inflammation and so on is just going to... Where's the pain coming from? So my friend, she did her cruciate. She was hobbling around for a very long time. And that's something I can just tangent slightly... When I looked at her and the fact that it went on for weeks and weeks and the pain wasn't dissipating and she was doing everything correctly, but it was still painful. Whereas we see our dogs who are amazing copers seem to accommodate it quite quickly and they, they get on with it. I, I don't think it means that that pain hasn't really gone. They're just like, right, I've got to adapt and I've got to, I've got to plow on. But where does that pain come from? Well, for me, for me it's, it's start, it's start, it, it starts within the structures in and around the joint and then you start to get a, a pattern of inflammation which then starts to cause um, more discomfort locally within the joint. And then you start to get sort of bad patterns of movement, poor postures mm -hmm. and so on and so on. And then you start to get secondary problems as well. Mm -hmm. So you might start to get sort of discomfort and so on um, through other soft tissues. Um, and then because they're sort of coupling up the muscles perhaps through their back to try and offload the weight uh, to the forelimbs, you might then start getting sort of secondary uh, discomfort down uh, down to the back and then an overloading of the forelimbs and so on and so you end up with this sort of widespread pattern of discomfort yeah. and sometimes with these sort of dogs it's trying to unknit um, what you're seeing at yeah. first you start unstitching one pattern of pain to only perhaps reveal another and then so on and so on until you localize it back to the source that perhaps yeah. is the, the primary condition in the first